Hey, Core Golf. Uh, firstly, huge apologies um, that I didn't keep my commitment and go live yesterday. Uh, I had every intention to, uh, and then a combination of me providing some education at the PGA show, uh, crazy travel plans, work, uh, I got distracted. And I got to be honest, I completely forgot uh, it was Tuesday in amongst all the chaos. So any student that went to log on uh, and listened to me live, um, I'm, I'm really sorry. I think I did mention in class that there was the potential um, for this to be done later. Uh, I didn't mean this time the next day, <laughs> uh, but I think some of you knew there was going to be a bit of chaos with me being down at the PGA show, but ultimately totally my fault. Uh, I got wrapped up in the chaos of the PGA show and my, uh, and giving my education and I totally forgot it was Tuesday. So I'll make every effort uh, for this to not happen again. Um, so that being said, we still have the opportunity to review what we've learned so far in the winter program. Uh, so as always, I'm going to share my screen and we're going to revise. Uh, so I know that at Core Golf, we're all starting to learn that repetition is not always the answer. So beating ball after ball after ball after ball uh, is not the key to playing better golf. But repetition with space in between, time in between, is a good way to learn. So every week, if we review what we did on week one, week two, week three, week four, if we keep reviewing these things, it's going to work your, your memory and you're going to start to remember these things with ease. You won't have to think as much uh, to recall this information. You won't get as confused when you're trying to remember this. It will be almost instant. So revision for a lot of you, and I'm hoping this is starting to stick. But when you set a goal, there's three components. There's the what goal, the how goal, and the why goal. The what gives you the, that's right, the outcome. The how gives you the process. And the why, which is what we talked about a lot this week, gives you the motivation. Now, if we focus on outcomes, we can become stressed because outcomes are low control. We cannot control our golf score. We cannot control what college we get into. We cannot control where we are on the leaderboard. We cannot control winning. So if we focus on our outcomes as human beings, when we focus on things we can't control, we get stressed. So we want to declare these. We want to have pictures of these on our vision board because we want to be connected with them. But we almost have to make an attempt to disassociate ourselves with these on a daily basis. We can be aware of them, but they cannot be our focal point. If we focus on our outcomes, if we focus on what we want, we will be stressed. So instead, we create some how goals because they help us stay in the process. And if we're focused on the process, that's going to help us relax because process goals are high control. So instead of focusing on, I want to play at this college, or I want to shoot this score, or I want to win this tournament, we can focus on things like, I have to do two minutes of meditation three times a day. I have to stretch as soon as I get out of bed. I have to work out at least three times a week and follow Kevin's program. Whenever I hit a golf ball and I'm working on my golf swing, I'm going to do the sandwich drill or I'm going to do speed variability. They're all the things that you can control. We've talked a lot about journaling. After practice, plan your practice, act it out, then reflect and write your reflections in a journal. That's something that you can control. And as a human, if you focus on the things that you can control, 
you'll be relaxed. And relaxed state is a more high performance state than stress. So I know you all know that. And by now, we should have our what goals written down, our how goals written down, and hopefully we've began to collate pictures of these. Now, this week we talked about why. Why do you want to do what you do? Why do you want certain grades? Why do you want to win tournaments? Why do you want to play golf in college? Why do you want to do this business degree? Why, 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 why? What motivates you? And we discussed three types of motivation. First type was zero. That means you have no motivation. Uh, and I use the example of when I was moving house, I had zero motivation to eat healthy. All I wanted to do was move the, the stuff from one house to another. And then when it was done, eat pizza. Zero motivation to, to cook, to clean, and to be healthy. I just wanted to eat, go to bed, start the next day. So we talked about that. We talked about me in that environment having zero motivation. Next type of motivation we discussed was external. So external motivation are you're motivated by things outside you. So you might be motivated to prove someone wrong. You might be motivated to make your parents proud. Um, you might be motivated, this example was given, to buy a Lamborghini. So when you pull up to the traffic light and you make the noise with the car, vroom, 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 everyone looks at you and everyone thinks you're cool. Okay, they're all motivations outside of you. And there's nothing wrong with that motivation. In fact, that motivation in some instances can be good and it's far, far, far better than zero motivation, of course. But ultimately, pulling up to the lights in the, in the Lamborghini and people thinking you're cool or trying to prove people wrong, because it's external, because it's outside of you, eventually that will wear down. So that motivation can actually reduce pretty quickly. So we definitely don't want zero motivation. And if we are externally motivated, that's great because at least we're motivated, but that motivation is going to run out. So to accompany the external motivators, we want to create some internal motivators. Why? Why do you do what you do? What burns inside you? I use the example of I've played a lot of sports uh, and I'm not a good golfer um, anymore. I was an okay club golfer, okay amateur golfer. And when I compare golf to all the sports that I played, nothing is better than a purely struck golf shot. For me, the, hitting the ball at the center of the face, it comes off with that perfect feeling and it flies exactly how you wanted it to fly. And in that instant, it probably felt like how Tiger Woods feels when he hits a shot. That's what I love about golf. We also talked about if I worked at core for money and I told everyone all I want to do is get money, get paid so I can buy a Range Rover, that would be a bit, some students said they wouldn't listen to me. They said that, well, that's not very nice. It's not very uh, inspiring motivation. So when I say I work at core because I want to help young men and young women not make the same mistakes I made, I don't want you to focus on outcomes. I don't want you to be, have zero motivation or be externally motivated. And I talk about changing young people's lives and inspiring them that makes me feel amazing. That's what burns deep inside of me. So we talked about the difference between my motivations to come to work, money, to buy something, or the passion inside me to help educate and inspire uh, the future generations of the world and create positive change. And once we'd used me as an example, with my zero motivation to eat healthy, 
Um, I think it was Max with the Lamborghini, Max's external motivation to buy the, the Lamborghini. Um, and then my internal motivation to, to be a coach and help and how that made different energy in the room versus coming to work just to get money to buy something. We showed a video. We showed a video of a man called Eric Thomas, and he talked about motivation. He talked about why. And he used Kevin Durant as an example, and he also used himself as an example. So the two questions that you were asked, what is Kevin Durant's motivation? Zero motivation, internal or external? And you were asked to discuss that. And then what was Eric Thomas's motivation? Was it zero motivation, internal or external? Um, and then we discussed that. So I'm gonna share the video that we played with you now. Uh, and then after this video, we'll just do a very quick um, review of what the expectations are when you turn up on uh, Sunday to class and what we'll be doing. Right, Durant scared me, because when Durant score, he don't say nothing. <laughs> he don't say, he ain't getting nobody excited. He ain't, he ain't trying to get LeBron pissed off or pumped up. He just score my man and shh. Only thing he does at the end of the game, he kiss his mama, he hug his brothers. All right, I'm out. Game over. Shh. But the one thing he does, I don't know if you watched it, the first thing he does when he gets on the court is he does what? Y'all better start watching these games, bro, because you're going to need to do what these champions doing if you're going to be a champion. The first thing he does is what with them numbers? He touched them numbers on the front. He touched them numbers on the back. And he's doing that for who? Which coach? His coach that was killed. His coach died at what age? And he wears what number? He got a Y. He got a Y. He ain't just playing for no championship. He not. You got to hear what I'm telling you. If y'all going to be great on that field, you got to have a Y. You got to have a reason for why you do what you do. When, when he comes out, he ain't tripping on LeBron. He, ain't, he don't care nothing about no Dwayne Wade. All he keep thinking about is, I'm going to get one for my coach. That's why he ain't all smiling, because why? He's not smiling because what he's trying to accomplish, he has not what? He ain't got it yet. He ain't geeked about winning no game. He not geeked about beating San Antonio. He not tripping because they up one game. That boy, and you ain't going to see that boy smile until he get the championship. And when he get it, he going to hold up. The problem with some of y'all, the reason why you don't give 120% every doggone time you get on the field, because you ain't got a why for what you do. You ain't got a why. I walk in the room, I can see some of y'all. I spoke to all of y'all when y'all came in for the most part. Why? Because I'm looking in your eyes. And I see some of y'all, and you ain't serious. And you think you about to go out there with the Ray Lewis's of the world? Negro, please, when Ray come out, you see the passion. Every game, you see the energy. He come out every game like, y'all follow me. Follow my lead, baby, and we're going to win this thing. What's your why? I, if, hey, if I don't give y'all nothing else, you better start that. What's your why? You know why I do what I do and I do it so passionately? Because my grandfather was a high school dropout. My father was a high school dropout. I was a high school dropout. And we about to break the cycle. I do what I do so my son won't have to go through what I went through. When I was at the football game, my old dude wasn't with me. I saw other kids with their father. I said, that'll never happen to me. I do what I do because my daughter says she's going to Harvard. It ain't even about y'all. I'm about to come here and blaze y'all. Why? Because I'm trying to get you all the NFL. I ain't about to miss this opportunity. This is the first NFL team I've ever done in my life, and I'm about to lick it. I'm about to give everything I got, and I will know if I don't get another gig, it won't have anything to do with the fact that I didn't put everything on the field. What's your why? Why do you wake up in the morning? Why do you put on that jersey? Why do you go out and practice? Why? You ain't got nobody. Listen to me. If, listen, okay, I want you to write this down because I'm about to get, ooh, I'm getting there. All right, all right. Slow down, E. I'm getting excited. Hey, so what, how, why? And we went deep into the why. So we used Eric Thomas, Kevin Durant as examples. We used my, some examples from my life. We used Max's example of owning the Lamborghini. And we had some really good conversations. And one of the things that we concluded is it's not black and white. So if you are thinking of something that motivates you, if something motivates you, like I want to play golf 
because I want to win money. Well, what's that going to do for you? What's that going to get you? Because ultimately, if we want to win money, we might think straight away, okay, that's external. But I want to win money because that's going to give me a certain level of financial freedom. Okay, what's financial freedom going to do for you? What's that going to get you? Well, it's going to help me be relaxed. And if I'm more relaxed, I'll be happy. And if I'm happy, I'll use some of that money to donate to a charity that's important to my heart, that's important to me, that's important to my family. And that will make me feel fulfilled. And that will give me satisfaction. So we started with something and we drilled down. And if you can remember, for some of you, I told you this is a cognitive behavioral therapy technique. It's called the downward arrow. So for those of you that are finding this hard to tap into your motivation, just make it very simple. Okay, why do I play golf? I want to win. Okay, what's winning going to do for me? What's that going to get me? What is winning going to do for me? What is winning going to get me? Well, to win, I have to deal with stress and pressure. Okay, what is dealing with stress and pressure? What is that going to do for me? What is that going to get me? If I deal with stress and pressure on the golf course, I'll build good habits. Okay, what are good habits going to get me? If I build good habits, what's that going to get me? If I build good habits, I'll be mentally strong. So if I face some adversity in my life, I'll be able to deal with that adversity. Okay, what is being able to deal with adversity going to get me? Well, that's going to help me be a well-rounded person, someone who can stay calm, and when others are panicking, I'll be calm. And that's going to make me feel proud and strong. And if I feel proud and strong, what's that going to do for me? What, that's, what's that going to get me? Well, that's going to give me confidence. And we can keep tapping down and tapping down and tapping down. So remember, we say this all the time. The most important conversations you have are the ones you have with yourself. So. Think about Kevin Durant's why. Think about Eric Thomas's why. Think about the conversations we had in class about Max's Lamborghini, about my motivations to work at court, about my motivations to not eat healthy. And then start thinking about yourself. Why do you play golf? Why do you want these grades? And always be asking, what's that going to do for me? What's that going to get me? What's that going to do for me? What's that going to get me? And you'll be tapping down and tapping down and yes, this pun is absolutely intended. Eventually, you will get to your core. And it's highly likely that when you get to your core, you'll have found your internal motivators. So what goals? They should be written down. How goals? They should be written down. Hopefully, you've started to collate pictures. And this Wednesday, when uh, sorry, this Sunday, today's Wednesday, this Sunday when we meet, in my session, you will have time to work individually on collating pictures for all of these and really starting to put together your vision board. Um, and just quickly, um, if I can find it, we're looking for something along these lines. So example of my vision board, and that's what I'm hoping you guys are going to get to. And when you do, that sort of that level of commitment, that amount of images, really lots of how images, lots of process images, lots of why images. And when we get there, we put them up. We have a laminated one you can take to practice. We put them up in the gym and we're creating a culture and environment at core where we're going to inspire each other to, to stay connected to our goals all year long not just what we want, but how we're going to get it, the process and why we want it. Okay. Thank you guys. Again, apologies that I missed this last night. Hope this recording is okay. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you.